Hello, welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm Jason DeFosse from Trenton, Ontario, Canada, and this is Dalen Zartman from Columbus, Ohio. Building on all the other evolutions that we've talked about, it's important that we identify different ways to approach and or gain access to our patient. Patient location is always important to determine the pathway to gain access. So what Dalen's going to do next is he's going to talk about some of those different techniques. Dalen? Yes, this is just more alternative methods for door removal. And again, the thought process behind these techniques is avoiding working the latch because the latch mechanisms on modern EVs are problematic. So we're gonna focus on hinge separation and then we're gonna rely on the door handles themselves. The Society of Automotive Engineers has established a guideline or recommendation that wants all of the manufacturers to install manual overrides on the interior door latches of both front doors. That's the requirement. So even if you have electromechanical door handles, accessing the interior handle and doing two movements of that handle will release the latch and lock me mechanism and allow the door to come free from the nader pin or the U-bolt that's established into the B-pillar. So to set this up, we wanna have full access to these hinges. That's gonna require removal of this fender. So we're gonna do a fender crush to create a gap in this line. Then we're gonna use a spreader to accordion fold or force this fender into a forward position. That typically separates the bolt patterns on the top of the fender rail and gives us access to the hinge. The spreader can then relocate very close to the A-pillar and develop a small and controlled window gap. It's very important with this move that you don't over-exaggerate it. If the movement at this point of contact is too extensive, then you'll damage the interior door latch, separate the rods from the latch mechanism, and the latch won't work anymore. So this technique becomes uh, off the list of options. So make sure you have close placement here, small gapping, cutter is gonna establish a position here, and then we're actually gonna demonstrate using a cutter to increase that gap so that we don't continue to leverage this window opening. So the cutter's gonna orient uh, parallel to the ground. One blade is gonna hook the interior door skin and the other blade is gonna pressurize the A-pillar. The cutter blades are then going to close and in that closing motion with straight blade geometry on modern day cutters, those blades pass each other extensively. That's gonna allow us to gap this further without leveraging this contact point above the latch. Understand that this is a limited move. The tips on the cutter blades will eventually puncture or punch through the door skins. So we're not looking for inches of movement, we're looking for a singular inch of movement. Just enough to relocate the cutter and get those tips of the blades to the back side of the hinge like we talked about in previous segments. We're going to step away and the rescue crew is going to come in and perform this technique. So the first rescuer is approaching the fender. He's identifying a benchmark between the strut tower and the bulkhead or firewall. He's crushing that fender to create a gap or an access point between the fender skin and the door. He's then gonna position the tips in between the door and the fender and he's gonna gain additional access for the cut man. He's now gonna position the spreader up in the window gap and apply a minor pressure point there. While he is doing that, the cut man is going to engage the A and the B and gain gap for the cutter blades. And you see he's buying all the resource he needs. He has just what he needs to get the blades to the back side of the hinge relocates the cutter to the hinge and now attacks the hinge assembly. As soon as this cut is complete, the primary rescuer on the spreader is able to give that a little bit more room, continue to gap that panel as the cutter man works down the door assembly. So the spreader will now relocate into that gap, open that joint up. That exposes the hurricane bar, allows the cut man to come in and cut the hurricane bar, good. Good. Move this fender skip. And now the bottom hinge is hooked, as well as the wiring harness, and the bottom cut is completed. Even with intense door compression in an accident, you'll notice that as soon as the cuts on the hinge were completed, the energy related between the latch and the hook mechanism on the B-pillar 
relaxed the door and allowed that joint to open up. Your secondary rescuers can now come in, engage the lock mechanism, engage the second stage of the handle and the external handle, and the door comes off of the vehicle. So in this segment, what did we cover? We talked about alternative methods for gaining access to our patient and how to properly address hinges as well as door movements. Some of the additional safety considerations that we did is we had our door tethered using a rope uh, so we didn't have any loss of control of that door. As Dalen had explained, the importance of interacting with that inside-outside handle to alleviate the additional pressures and extrication time by trying to attach that rear latch. Rear latch was not compromised. This was the right course of action for this type of demonstration. Thank you for watching Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.